Greetings, it is none other than me, Hualda Richards, and I'm here to do a review of Machines Wired for War. At least, that's the name used to find it on Google. The actual name is Machines. So, what the hell is this? What the hell are we looking at? It looks like horrible old school game, doesn't it? Well, too bad, it is. It was released in 1999 by none other than Caribdis Limited. It's a company which as far as I'm aware only made this game. The game was published by Acclaim and Entertainment, of course. And normally it would come as a demo with your Turok 2 Seeds of Evil, at least around here. At least it happened to me. Now what would you expect from a strategy game? Story? Yes, there is a little story in here. It's pretty simple, really. It's the future. The humans have found cures and other means to fight diseases, premature death, blah blah blah. Well, in other words, you can only die because of old age, because they got in that smart. So then, they got this little problem coming into their lives. Overcrowding. Earth isn't big enough to support all these people suddenly not dying fast enough. So they had to build spaceships to populate other planets. Good enough, I say. I always wanted to live in Mars. But how would we... How would we do that? How would we populate something without having to lose people or something. Well, we figured, why the fuck we not build a couple of nice robots? Yeah, let's build a fuck ton of robots and look around the planet. At least we won't, we won't be killed in the process by lack of oxygen or alien UFOs or something. And so we did that. They built robots. At first they were pretty simple drones. You know, like like nowadays. Just driving around with their camera scopes, filming everything. But, you know... Peace is never a long thing. Let's say... United States have one kind of robots, Russia has another kind of robots. The two of them met, and one of them blew up some, for some reason. It was the American one, of course. <laughs> and then... Butthurt. Butthurt ensued. You destroyed my robot, they said. And no, we didn't, the others said. And well, we couldn't do it the peaceful way, so they decided to research and build better robots to fuck things up a little. Why not? And so we're here. Machines. I'm not gonna do a campaign run. That's a little bit too long, and I never beat it a campaign myself. Never had the chance. I only had a demo. So let's just get down to the basics. We're now in the skirmish screen. You can choose the game type, the terrain type, and the scenario. No idea why, but you can. Now the game types are pretty simple around here. Let's see. Well, the normal game type is normal. You get two builders and two fighter robots. That's all you need. Battle. 
I remember you get an extra fighting robot, which is more advanced than the starter ones. Special, not sure. I never use special. I know it has something to do with fighter robots. As you might notice, if you choose different game types, you'll get different terrain types. Well, the normal type has the most terrain types. Desert, Ice Moon, Fortress, Dales, Moon, Graco, Volcanic and Midian Interior. I never seen that many in the demo. In fact, I could have sworn there was only Desert in the demo. No matter which game type you would take. If it, here's a little something. If you take the special game type and you take Homeworld, you'll get a little, a little bit of fun. It's the future, and we wanted to do a little jousting with giant robots. I think we'll get to that later. Now we're just gonna show off things. And here's the settings. You can choose how to start your skirmish. Pretty basic, really. Fog of war. If it's off, you can see the whole map. You can see all the bot players. You can see everything. No limitations to your sight. I always keep it off. Because I don't like surprise attacks. Yes, I'm that much of a pussy. Fuck you. Resources. I suppose that has something to do with the crystals which you can find. I'll tell you how and what are they a bit later. But I always keep it high. I never notice a big difference, however. Starting resources? Now that's something you'd really want to check on. I always keep it on the highest value. 10,000. Because I'm not really that good on this game. But it's enough to get you just about any unit you want in the game. Provided you play it smart, that is. Starting posi position is fixed or random. I don't see the difference. I always keep it fixed. You can choose your victory condition, which is either total annihilation a destruction of a seeding pod or a timer limit. I don't know what the default does, I never choose it. And the starting technology level, this is important. It pretty much sets the difficulty of your fight. While it is easier to beat the game, the skirmish game at least, with the high technology level it'll be also easier to lose it. On the lower settings it's harder to win but it's harder to lose as well. It's because it's not only you who has the high level of technology it's also the bot players. Then there's player color and how many players there should be in the bot match, skirmish, whatever you like to call it. I normally take the red color and four players, cause it's more fun that way. So let's get in the game, cause nobody wants to watch the same screen all the time. And here we are, oh god my god, oh my ears, my eyes, my everything. That's what the new kids would say about the graphics. <laughs> right at the beginning we have this, this. And these four suckers. Now what the hell do we have here? What am I looking at? This here is a seeding pod. It acts as your main headquarters or something. Let's call it the main headquarters for now. If it gets blown up, you automatically lose all of your resources and you're pretty much fucked. And this is just a civilian factory. You build builders in it. You can also build some locator robots. 
transporters and technicians for now let's just build a better builder the basic idea of getting a higher technology level is to build a more advanced builder so that you would unlock more buildings speaking of which let's take this guy now in the construct menu you see we don't have a lot of things we have two turrets a light infantry factory which I'll let them build right now we have a mine another civilian factory and a communications beacon which I suppose helps you see further away if you have fog of war on I can't tell you if that's true I never had fog of war off in a skirmish game I already told you why but then comes the question if if the seeding pod is the main building and everything why why can't we build one I mean it, it is the, the, the important building we, we really need one don't we well that's the game's way of telling you that you should grow some balls and you better keep the damn building safe you can't rebuild a seeding pod you can't capture a seeding pod either so if you lose it you better say bye bye and here's our new builder now look what happens in the construct menu tada yeah I know it wasn't very good <laughs> but we got more buildings let's just let them build a little so that I could tell you more about the game in the meanwhile now you see over here we have two grunts they are they are considered the fighter robots grunts they kinda suck they are cheap they have little health and armor their weapon range is shit not to mention the weapons themselves but they can be useful as cannon fodder if you know how to use them correctly like I did by creating a hundred of these and sp simply send all of them at the same time to the bot's place he wasn't very happy about it in the military factories we can make in more units obviously but the grunt seemed to be a little bit ahead of some other unit how is this possible oh it's a scout never bother making scouts they are even weaker than the grunts plus we only have two guns bolters and disruptors not worth it at least grunts have a flamethrower we also have warriors reapers wraith reapers and spies I hear the spies are supposed to steal intelligence from other other enemy buildings or something. I never used them. I can't really tell you that. I'm sorry. I just never found them that useful. Now what we have over here is a turret. It's useful. Why? Well, why the fuck would you think it's a turret it shoots lasers at enemies do the math I'm sure you'll get this I'm sure you'll understand the reasons behind this over here at the top left we have our map the green the yellow and the blue guys they're all our enemies all the bad guys 
if you see any of the dots getting too close to your base, it's probably an enemy unit. They never send any scouts, spies, anything of that sort to your base. They just go snooping around as usual. Like in the other games. Oh, here's another thing about buildings. If it's flashing, it means you can't build it there for some odd reason. Maybe the terrain doesn't fit. Maybe there's some asshole sitting in the way and you gotta move him out first. But yeah, if it's flashing, you can do it. If it's not, go right fucking ahead. You can rotate the buildings before you build them with the control button. Just hold it and move the mouse to whatever side you want the building to be facing. Now what I'm, what I'm building right now is a more advanced factory for military units and siege units. We'll need those. Definitely. Let's let it build a few Wraith Reapers for demonstrational purposes. As you know, we need them. Here's a good tip, by the way. Once you have a more advanced builder, get rid of your civilian factory and build a better one. Ah, I love the sight of an exploding house. Wouldn't you love it? As long as you're the one who did it, of course. I always love seeing them explode. You can order just about any building to self-destruct, even your seeding pod, but why the fuck would you do that? It's an instant... instant death. Don't ever do that. Don't be an idiot. For the sake of yourself, at least. Oh. Here's our guest. The Wraith Reaper. He has better weapons than those two useless grunts. The two pulse rifles. Although the difference between their armor and HP points isn't that big. It's definitely much better. It has bigger weapon range, so it can obviously hit things from further ahead, especially grunts. Grunts will never actually reach your reaper unless there's a lot of them and the reaper is all alone. Actually, if you're good at it, you could possibly destroy a whole enemy base with just one unit. But this is a strategy game. What does this make it any different from others I've seen before, my dear friend Holder Richards, you might ask? Not a big difference, but it's the one that I love the most. See this button over here? Gee, I wonder what that means. It's obviously a head. Would it grow a head or something? Let's push it! You weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> that button gives you the ability to control your fighter, builder, or any other robot you have. In first person. Except turrets and buildings, of course. But why the fuck would you want to do that anyway? Amazing, isn't it? You don't get to do that in other strategy games. At least, I don't know a game that lets you do that. You control the robot with your mouse and the arrow keys. Arrow keys are for moving purposes, mainly. And the mouse is to look around and shoot. You shoot with the left mouse button. As you can see in the top left, the pulse rifles have a little meter. What's that for? Well, let's shoot. Oh, it's a reload meter. I would never have guessed that. Aiming at just about anything will let you see the green and the blue bar. The green bar is health, the blue bar is armor. 
armor will always recharge on the units so be warned or noted it depends on the situation it's mainly because of the enemy units speaking of which we have guests look at them go turrets isn't it lovely it almost feels like being in a first person shooter you don't get that every day now do you every time you destroy a unit you can gather his remaining debris if you have a scavenger unit for that of course getting that is gonna take you a while it's supposedly an advanced unit I don't know why it only collects junk let's see what's at the enemy base 